everybody. My name is Lady J. I am here with Mr. Derek Gibson. He's actually a gubernatorial candidate running for governor of New York. That's so great. welcome to Lady J Media. We finally got a chance to meet after, what, two years? Right. We finally got this, this meeting going on. So I'm in New York City today. What part of New York is this? This is Manhattan. Manhattan, okay. Y'all, I'm overwhelmed up here. But anyway, this is we're in Manhattan. Um, here, we're going to do a short interview because I wanted to talk to you about some of the things that are going on in New York that we're hearing all over about, especially about the governor. Um, I want to get your opinion on that, and then we want to find out what made you run for governor. So, tell us, first of all, before we start there, tell us just a little bit about yourself, who you are, um, so the people can get to know you. Well, thank you. I am Derek Gibson, uh, and I'm running for New York State Governor. And yes, it's been two years. I met this uh, lady in uh, in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and somehow we didn't connect right away. I don't know what took her so long to get here, <laughs> but I'm glad she's here today. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I'm a New Yorker by birth. I was raised in the South. Uh, Y'all probably can hear the accent in the Atlanta, Georgia area, Shiloh, Georgia. And uh, I went there and I learned some common sense. A really good thing that I was raised in the South. I was kind of a hot tempered guy, so it was best mm -hmm. for me to be in the South and raised there. I graduated high school. I won a scholarship to go to uh, uh, a college in America, Georgia, and I got a degree in automotive technology. And I applied that degree to my life, and I opened up a small business transmission repair shop, Selva. <laughs> I also work for different uh, transmission companies such as Amoco mm -hmm. and the dealership Chrysler, all that. So that is where I'm at. And after that spent, I went ahead on and uh, went back to college and got me a degree in criminal justice. I got a chance to uh, be at the CCRB uh, investigating police misconduct or whatever. So I did a lot in life. Uh, I'm an older guy. I'm 60 years old, so you would expect me to be done a lot. I am a businessman. I own a construction and consulting company at this uh, particular time, and we're just pushing it out from there. Okay, that's an interesting uh, background. Very interesting. I didn't know all of that. I can hear the accent, so I kind of figured you might not be from New York because I can hear the southern mm -hmm. accent. But I got you. That's a nice. That's a nice. I right. Like that. that's right. Nice. And I tell them all the time. I'm a New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker from birth. Y'all just transplant. So I'm actually a original New York. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So now you said you're 60 years old. Right. The, and first of all, running for any position is hard because people, you got people coming at you, people in your business. Um, it's just a whole bunch of stuff that goes with right. running for governor. So why in the world at 60 would you want to like run for governor of New York, New York State? Well, I already, I, I always been interested in uh, politics. I, I was on uh, George Bush uh, Business Advisory Board, uh, the second George Bush, mm -hmm. and I just been interested. I met, uh, had the opportunity to meet uh, President Carter, uh, Omar Sadat, uh, uh, Manish Begin of Israel. Uh, when they came to Georgia, oh, wow. they landed in the Air Strip where I was going to college at. So okay. I was inspired uh, more so then when I met those guys. Mm -hmm. And when I moved back to New York, I never really liked the South. It was so hot. So I moved back to New York and uh, I seen how the state was going. I was like, I can do something about that. I can change it, turn it around so it'll be prosperous for all. The cost of living is too high. Mm -hmm. uh, the crime is out of control. So I decided two years ago to put my hat in the ring to mm -hmm. run for the governorship of New York State. So that's what I did. That's what brings me uh, to this point today. So I'm a grassroots candidate. I'm out in the street. You know, amongst the people talking to them. And, uh, seeing what uh, what they need, what they use, and this is how I form my platform. You can go on my website, look at my platform. I form it according to the people's wishes. And I saw, even as we were walking, like people know who you are. They know who Derek Gibson is. Right. So that's a good thing. Um, even the lady, like she was so surprised when we walked in here. Right. She was so surprised to see you. So that's a good thing that you formed. You, you already have, you know, your followers already. Right, right. So I went to, and I have to give this, them, this this article, their shout out, it's called The Daily Beast. You ever right. heard of that? Right. Okay. So I was going a little bit of research and I went on The Daily Beast and um, they actually call you a proud boy. They said, friend Republican bets on proud boy fandom and wacky governor race. Right. They did. And it made me laugh. It was hysterical. I said, you 
know, so it's, it's almost like they're not taking what you're doing seriously. Right, and they're not. Yeah. It's the same as they did President Trump. They mm -hmm. didn't take him seriously. And the next thing they woke up, he was the president. He was the president, right. So, you know, they write those articles. They interviewed and they twist and turn them. It was one that was our proud. Well, like if I was, it's really none of your business. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have to expose that to you or nobody else if I don't want to. Because I made in uh, on Twitter, I made a statement that I like the Proud Boys. For now, they're the only somebody I see that's really standing up mm -hmm. for our freedom in America and protecting those rights and our traditional values. Mm -hmm. And I put it out there just for a bite to see who will bite who on bite, it. Yeah. And they bit. They, they, they really did. Yeah. <laughs> right. And they wrote their article out. You know, it just says, Sanders said far right. Mm -hmm. I'm, He's far, far right uh, guy. Yeah, I'm a right guy, but not a far right guy. I'm just a sensible person. Mm -hmm. Believe in Americans, traditional values, and freedom. So I stand for that, regardless of what the news media opinion is about anybody else. I don't care. That don't bother me. Mm -hmm. I'm bold enough to speak my thoughts and my mind. If, if I want to say I'm a proud boy, I'm a proud boy. What you going to do about it? There's nothing you can do about it. Right. Yeah. That might be the New Yorker in you, too. Right. That's the Queens. <laughs> President Trump, yeah, the Queen. yeah, we're Queens the guys. <laughs> so, um, because uh, other articles that I read, they called you entertaining, mm -hmm. um, controversial, right. because you just you just say what's on your mind. Right, like, I say what people won't say. I'm that guy. Right, right. The same thing Trump said. Like right. people say what people won't say. So when you when you hear, I, I heard you say that you just laugh at it. But does it ever get to a point where you just get annoyed because it seems like they are just not taking you seriously with what you're doing? I don't. I feed off of it, actually. You know, the old story, go back to the goat that fell in the way and they kept nothing dirt on mm -hmm. it, packed on his feet till he got to the top. So that is what I do. I actually feed on that. I like it. I like all the negative tension because mm -hmm. I make you look stupid when I open my mouth up and talk about what you're really printing or what you said. You know, I mm -hmm. change the whole narrative. And this is why. The news media hadn't really brought me on like they should have because they were very aware that I'm running for governor mm -hmm. and uh, that I speaks out. And I had several behind me that still haven't brought me on the show and they fully support me, which mm -hmm. makes absolutely no sense. Mm -hmm. So I'm the guy that says what needs to be said. I'm the voice of the people. That's mm -hmm. the type of guy I am. So what you see is what you get. Do you um, consider yourself an underdog in the, in the race? I amongst am the, amongst I, everybody that's running. Uh maybe I am an underdog and I like that position being the underdog. Mm -hmm. I like surprises. Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. surprises. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, even when I do my interviews, that's what I tell everybody. I always go for the people that nobody wants to talk to. Right. Because a lot of times those are the people that surprise you and Correct. they come out in the front, you know. That's right. Then everybody's trying to run and get at you. And I'm like, I already got this story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you smart. Yeah, so I <laughs> I, I go for that. And so the other thing I wanted to ask you about is the Proud Boys, because there's this whole thing going around about you are really like, you smoozing with the Proud Boys. Right. You hanging with the Proud Boys. I am. You are. Okay, you admit to that. I am. See, I don't okay. take what the news media say or uh, any of those groups say they're a hate group, they're a racist group. I take some none of that. Mm -hmm. I make my own decisions, my own opinions. From what I've seen, the Proud Boys are straight up. A1, 100% Americans. I okay. love the guys. Okay. I love them. I mean, they fight. They fight for America. Mm -hmm. But the media want to demonize them and also the leadership want to demonize them. Anybody that stands up for America, anybody that loves the flag is now painted a racist mm -hmm. or white supremacist or a bigot. I own up to it. Yeah, I'm a white supremacist, I'm a racist and a bigot. Mm -hmm. right? I'm clearly a white man. You can see that. So what what is your response to the people that are saying that the Proud Boys were partly responsible for what happened in January at the Capitol? Well, they're going to say that in a way, but the Proud Boys is always somewhere protecting the citizens, you know, because we've been let down by the government, the, the police or whoever. They're not protected. So we Proud Boys will step in and protect that particular freedom. So then they want to paint the proud boy. Oh, they're insurrection, they this and that. Mm -hmm. But basically, Antifa led it into that. The police sat that up for January mm -hmm. the 6th. And the reason it was set up to make President Trump be uneligible for office to, to run again, which it failed miserably, which it should, everything they brought against President Trump have failed because President Trump was put there by God mm -hmm. to expose our wicked, crooked government. So the same thing with these January 6th Joe Biden political prisoners. Is going to be exposed to. We got several police officers that was there dressed like uh, regular citizens, leading people into the Capitol. We had police waving people into the Capitol in uniform. Police standing around just having a good time on the phone. It was no big. It was no big deal. But this was set up, and now the people are being punished for it. Those guys are 
in D.C. in prison around the United States shouldn't be in there at all. Mm-hmm. They're charged with misdemeanors. Why don't they have a bond? The Constitution said so you got a right to that. So why haven't they got a bond? And why they're being mistreated? One law say I did not feed them right. They are treated worse than the prisoner in Guantanamo Bay, which is a disgrace. So they are political prisoners, and something has to be done about that. Like black people been saying, and I hate to use it over and over again, the Justice Department, the justice system is corrupt. Not only from the top, but from the bottom to the top. The whole thing is corrupt. There's no hope for it. It needs to be disbanded, and we need to create some other kind of avenue to get equal justice. Mm-hmm. Now, black folks screen about this for years. You no, know, everybody trying to deaf ear to our community like we were nuts. Now that President Trump was elected, they used those very same tactics on President Trump, even though he was a white man, to try to get him out of office. So it's all being exposed now, all race of people seeing what's going on. And we got to keep fighting, don't lay down. That prosecution they're doing to these January 6th defendants is no more than a scare tactic to make everybody else fearful for doing anything else. Now, you know, you said a mouthful, but the thing is, there's going to be a lot of people, black and white, who are going to totally disagree with what you right. said. They're going to call you crazy. Right. Um, black people are really going to be mad at some of the comments that you've made. Right. And so how do you answer them? I know you stand on what you say, but how do you come back and answer them? Because... You know, some of these are going to be the same people that right. you're out here campaigning to right. say and vote for me. Right. So how do you, how do you, you know, go back and kind of, I don't know if you can correct it because you said what you said. That's right. It's nothing to correct. Yeah. And I stand yeah. for what I say. And when they approach me and ask me these things, I put it in a way so they own a fool can even understand it. And they'd be like, well, we never thought about that way. I approached back by like, Madeline. I told them the same thing. They actually support my platform. It's for the exception that I bag law enforcement. Then when I explained to them, uh, a society without law enforcement is no society at all. Mm-hmm. I can do what I want to and do what you want to. It's no rule, it's no law, it's nothing. So it's insane. And they think about it. So, well, uh, come to think of it, you're right. And I've changed a lot of those guys over in mm-hmm. Black Lives Matter and Antifa from just talking to them. I'm the guy that crossed over and talked common sense. Mm-hmm. And I stick to what I say. I don't run and hide just like uh, Joe Biden when he was campaigning, they was talking about, well, you signed that uh, police strike law, whatever it was that locked up all these black men incarcerated mm-hmm. and poor white men. He wouldn't own up to it. I would own up to it. I was like, well, crime was real bad at that time. Drugs was bad, this and that. So we had to do something. Yeah, looking back on it, it may have been a mistake. So you have to own up to those things and not run and hide. So what I say, I back them up. I back them up with facts and I stand up for them I'm about truth, justice, and right. That's what I'm about. Okay. What you see is what you get. Got it, got it. Um. It just reminds me when I'm talking to you, sometimes I think about Trump because Trump is always saying, you know, I said it, I meant it, and move on, move right. on, like, right. you know, next thing. Right. So I get, it, it must be a New York thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, because y'all don't back down. I will say Not that you, you don't back down. Um, what do you think about what's currently going on with your governor now, with Cuomo? Do you think he should step down? Andrew Cuomo, uh, the, I never liked the guy because he don't govern right mm-hmm. uh, in, in that position. As a individual, I didn't know him, but uh, you know, I don't hate anyone. But his governing was totally uh, whacked and left as like the bail reform. That was enough for him to step down when he signed it. I know he didn't want to sign it, mm-hmm. but he was forced to sign it because he was a white guy, Italian white guy, and everybody pushing back on playing the race card at the particular time. So if he didn't sign it, he would have been branded as a racist. So he mm-hmm. just chunked that up and signed it. He really didn't want to do it. But saying that, Andrew Cuomo uh, should step down immediately, not just because of the accusation of uh, the assault on those women. I think that's just a cover. But for the director that he uh, gave to the nursing home to take those COVID patients back in, where they were most vulnerable. Why would you put them back in the nursing home for his most vulnerable people? So I think, you know, I was like, why is this guy doing this? Is this population control? What is this about? Mm-hmm. Is it getting rid of the people that is ill and that don't work out of life you don't want to take care of? So I looked at it from, from that. Even though he put it directly back, I still have it. And I did refer it to the Justice Department when he did it because I know it wasn't right. Yes, Andrew Cuomo needs to step down. He's just a puppet for the, uh, I would say, communists. I'm not going to even say social, for the communist group we have in the Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. This is what they're doing. They're talking about far right. No, it's far, far left or whatever. You know, I'd rather be right any day than to be left. Mm-hmm. So, yes, he should step down in the light of 
those accusations, but the nursing home did have been swept under the rug. They won't investigate it, Department of Justice, but I asked governor will investigate Andrew Como and hold him responsible for what he has done in the nursing home. I didn't, I didn't know, I wasn't aware of the nursing home. We didn't get that story down there, but wow. That, but the nursing home, yeah. uh, is over 15,000 people died in that uh, debacle wow. that he made. He's responsible for it. He has the blood on his hand, and he needs mm. to be held accountable for it. Mm. Wow. Woo. Okay. Well, we may have to revisit that conversation. Now, um, the thing that I ask a lot of politicians, and we just talked about FOMO and all the stuff that he's doing, so the thing that I ask a lot of politicians is when you get into the seat, what's going to make you different, make you do anything different? There's politicians who, it's bribery, corruption, sex scandals, all kinds of stuff. What is going to make you different from the other ones that are in the seat? So thank you for that question. But the first thing, I'm not a politician. I'm a businessman. I'm an everyday guy. I'm not Wall Street or Main Street. Okay. So we'll get that right right there. I'm not that politician. So that's okay. automatically okay. a difference. But we got to get in and we got to govern according to the Constitution of the United States of America. The New York State Constitution does not override the United mm. States Constitution. We got to go back to that. Our Constitution only had a right to life. And if we have another Constitution of Congress coming up in mm. 2027, it can't come fast enough. The New York State Constitution needs to be changed and we need to start working on, on that now. Mm -hmm. But the government has to be scaled back. I want to very small, I want to privatize at least 75% of the now government. I want to, I want to uh, break up the Board of Education. It is uh, no longer needed. It's a detriment to the students, our uh, people in the school system. I want to put it back to each individual township and county and cut the taxes. That's something we must do. We t Our tax rates are so high because we our uh, welfare city and welfare state. That okay. is, that's why the tax rate is so high. So okay. we need those one to take care of, number one, the illegal aliens, which we have probably over a million now. Just a year or two ago, it was over 500,000. Of illegal aliens? Right. Now that the border wow. is wide open, so you can just imagine the number that is wow. uh, in New York. Uh, so it's sanctuary. We're sanctuary. I'll be re seeing that. We'll no longer be a sanctuary city or a sanctuary state. Mm. The governor has the power to remove the mayor, which is a good thing. And I won't be shy for him if the mayor is not doing right, removing him from this post. I am the guy that is bold enough to say these things. And I only say it, but to bring it to fruit. Okay, okay. Wow, so you would be, you would have no problem removing the mayor from his seat. Absolutely no problem. If the mayor is not governing for the people, he has to be removed. It is time up for career politician and not government for the people. I don't take money from big pharma, big corporation. I don't do that. I take money from the people, $10, $20 here, because I'm their voice. If I take that big money for them, they bragging. Some of the counties bragging, well, I raised $4 million in this quarter. I was like, I raised $4 million people just by going out talking to them to vote with them. Sell because that money you're raising, you got to be accountable for it. You got to be the voice for the big corporation. Right, Therefore, right. you're not even voice for the people. America was designed to be a voice for the people. The government worked for the people. The people don't work for the government. So we got to get it straight. And it's something else that bothers me. I travel around the United States. Mm -hmm. I see these capitals. It's putting fence around the capital, the people house. Mm -hmm. The first order business on the first day, I would have that removed. I would okay. give the director to have that removed because the people house, I want you to come in whether you agree with me or not. I got my office door. I can lock my door. Why the whole capital got to be fenced off? Mm -hmm. It makes absolutely no sense, and we can't go for it. Mm. So you would, you would definitely make sure you're accessible. To right, the correct. People, to the people of the and number one, that's very easy because I mm -hmm. walk the streets as mm -hmm. governor. I come out and walk the street and sit in Starbucks with you and, and come eat at your house everywhere. I'm that type of individual. Okay. I will come do just what you said. Mm -hmm. I am not. Uh, oh, I'm the governor. I got to stay in the in the mansion up here. I can't mm -hmm. walk amongst my people. No, I need to walk amongst the people. If I'm doing something wrong, I need to be checked for doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. So I'm the type of governor that will walk amongst the people and talk to you, come to your house, come to your churches. It's time to turn America back around that the, the leaders work for the people. We shall be held accountable to the people. And that's the kind of America I want to see. That's the kind of New York State under my administration that we will have. Okay. Now, I got three more questions for you. <clears throat> Number one is about the mask. I want to get your your opinion, how you feel, because I saw that huge rally going on out there. I want to talk about the vaccinations. I don't know if it's going on up here, but in Baltimore, a lot of our students can't return back to college 
unless they get vaccinated. Employees can't return back to work unless they get vaccinated. So I want to find out, I'll go with those two first, how you feel about those two things. Right, the mask, I never wore the mask. A long time I will wear it if I walk in the store and I need something, they say you need to put a mask on, sir. I hesitate, then I put it on. Mm -hmm. But I know I do my research. The mask does absolutely no good. We all know that it doesn't. It just uh, uh, it's about control. It's not about your safety. That's all the mask is. Mm -hmm. uh, and number two, the vaccine. I did not take the vaccine. I will not take the vaccine. My kids will not take the vaccine either. Let it be the people's choice. Mm -hmm. It's not for me to mandate that or force on anybody. These governors and mayors are using the tenth amendment about uh pandemics or whatever come on they can use certain powers to do this and that but it's unconstitutional what they are doing it's no need for, for a virus that's 99.98 percent you know you can get over it so mm -hmm. it's no need for that and furthermore i'm gonna say this uh group of scientists and doctors which i, I i'm a part of have finger prick tests you don't need a nostril test with a q-tip make mm -hmm. you cry you don't need that we got the finger prick test that you can do yourself to tell you where you had COVID, got COVID now, whatever, then you can discard it yourself instead of government keeping your DNA. And it's approved by the FDA. Imagine that. We have the homopathic treatment in two days, so you don't need a hospitalization, nothing. And you up and going running miles and miles. Mm -hmm. Why? The leadership and the government not pushing that. Why are they not pushing that? Because the FDA approved that jab is not FDA approved, but they're pushing it very hard. Mm -hmm. So we can't allow these things to go in as governor, I will. Instead of spending money on the test with the swabs and all that, we'll do the finger prick test and we'll keep the homopathic treatment for the people. There's no need for our people to die. Mm. And also we had our high, high drops of chlor chloroquine. We have uh, access to that all too. Why did they ban that? That's what President Trump said. But they don't care because uh, they want to get rid of him and they want people to die. Bill Gates is not a doctor. He says too many people on earth. Then he tell you to take a vaccine. Think about what is going on. Mm. So the schools, our kids shouldn't be masked all day at all. That is complete nonsense. Yes, take up a precaution and that's it and go on about your life. You can't stop well, uh, stop life for one virus like we have done. I mean, that's that's insanity. The CDC put this stuff out. They're not a government entity, but what they do, their employees don't even wear masks. They don't even recommend to their employees. And they the CDC, but they recommend to us. So just people do your research, look deep beyond and find out what is going on. The vaccine has been causing inflammation in the heart of young people. It causes eye problems. Do your research, people. If you want to take the vaccine, go ahead. I'm not saying, I'm not anti-vaccine at all, and I'm not anti-mask, but it's your choice. And you're, and you're just saying it's not something you would do, and right. your kids won't do. Right, I won't, we gotcha. won't do it because it's my choice. Just like the devil cats around all the time, my body, my choice. Mm -hmm. Let it apply to every single thing in our life. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Okay, and then I wanted to talk about your song. On the way up here, I, uh, I, you know, people were like, but where are you going? And I said, I'm going to New York. I'm going to interview Derek Gibson. And one person said, oh, yeah, I know who Derek Gibson is. I'm going to send you a video. So I thought it was a video of you at a press conference or something. But it was a <laughs> video of you rapping. Right. So tell, can you, and you were saying the N-word in the video. Right. I can't really play it on here, but... You were you were rapping about right. I'm Derek Gibson and the N word and all right. that. So right. how? So then I go back to the Daily Beast article, right? Because they may look at that as like you know this man is just silly or you know he's I'm not silly. That I am. <laughs> um, how do you respond to that when people? Well, well, first of all, you have some black people who are really upset with you mm -hmm. right. and that video, right? Because. You are saying the N-word. Right. So let's respond to them first. What do you want to say? To right. So I'm not saying the N-word. I'm saying an acronym. Okay. So their feelings hurt. I don't care about the feelings. I walk on my feelings every single day. But I put that video out there for one reason. I want y'all to go look at that video. Hopefully y'all can get in and look at it. It's all over the place. Mm -hmm. I put out that for one reason because Hunter Biden especially said the the, the N-word. I want, I want to say it on here, but I don't want to get the you know, yeah. stuff taken down when you put it up. But he said the N-word. And I heard none of the black people, none of the black leaders saying nothing about Hunter Biden saying that. So I said, I'm going to do this video, uh, but it's going to be an app for him. They're going to think it's saying my, they were going to think it's saying that, which it sounds like, but it's not. Uh -huh. It's only an acronym. But I want to put it, bring attention to see who was going to bite uh -huh. after the white Hunter Biden said it. 
then the black Gary Gibson put the video out and I'm getting more criticism than the white Hunter Biden. And mm -hmm. it's not even, if they were to look at it, they'll see it's an acronym. Mm -hmm. So saying that the black community is manipulated, we know that I'm a black man. We all know that the black community is manipulated. We've been manipulated for six or seven, 70 years by a Democratic Party and we still doing it. So if my video hurts your feelings, good, wake up. That's what it's for, to wake you up. I embrace whatever. And I'm gonna tell y'all this story why uh, I'm niggas for Trump. I'm gonna say that right now. I was at Trump Tower and we were doing a protest and this black woman walked up to me with her white wife and she pointed at me. She said, you have that Trump, you a nigga and you has that Trump hat on. And I pointed back up, I said, right, I'm niggas for Trump. Wow. So that's why I embrace whatever you call me. I embrace coming cool. I embrace that. I'm not afraid to say any word. If that word nigga hurts your feeling too bad, the meaning of a nigga is somebody with bad actions. It has nothing to do with colors. It is your actions. That's what it is. So, so to you, it could be a black person or a white person. Right. Any Asian, color. Any, anything. It could be any, anybody any. that the actions. That is what a nigga is. So we got to change. Oh, I, we can't say this as a black man, but the rap, very people that are criticizing me riding that car, listen to the rap music, saying, nigga, all day, bitch, this and bitch. I know very people listen to that garbage that I don't listen to, but they want to criticize me for using the acronym. Mm, got it. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I'm okay. that guy. You're that guy. So I want you to look at the camera and you close, and I want you to tell people why they should vote for Derek Gibson, especially if you're living in New York. Why should right. they vote for Derek Gibson? The number one thing is why you should vote for Derek Gibson is the cost of your freedom depends on the future of your children depends on me getting into office, giving your freedom back, cutting taxes, getting the school system right, taking the CRT out of the school system. All this stuff has got to go out of our school system. So the, crime rate is high as hell. I mean, it's ridiculous. You can't hardly walk down the street due to bail reform. Then they tell the law abiding citizen you cannot have a weapon to protect yourself. And then they tell the police not to protect you. So think about what is going on. You got to put your feet down on crime. I will uh, bring the guard up the first day on the job and we will get crime under control. It will not be tolerated in the state of New York at all. I would deputize people along with the National Guard and we will get things back under control. The crime rate is up about 300% now and we can't no longer keep uh, going on like that. So if you want a great New York, I'm your guy. Put your feelings in your shoe and you walk on them and you look at my platform. Go on Gibson and number four, governor.com and you'll find out more about me. Donate your $10, your $20. Help me travel around the state and take my message. All right. Well, this is this is a fun interview. I gotta come back up here again and interview you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I have a lot to say. You, you do. <laughs> um, yeah, you stopped me a couple of times. So, but I appreciate you sitting down doing the interview with me. I look forward to coming back again. I did want you out in your candidacy, and I'm going to follow you because, like I said, I follow the ones that the people are just kind of like brushing over thank and you. laughing at. Right. So I'm definitely come back again right. follow you or if you have something going on let me know i will i will come up and everybody make sure tell them your, where they can find you again you can find me on facebook Derek gibson uh like my page Derek gibson for governor i'm on twitter you can find me there gibson for the new york state governor and the same thing on instagram Derek gibson on linkedin you can find me on those follow me you can get the message i'm a rough i'm a tough talk i hit you in the head with a hammer to wake you up so don't come get in my way if you don't want to be woke. If you want to stay asleep, stay asleep. I'll wake you up the right way. Not like the Democrats woke the right way. The Democrats say a man can have a baby. I'm going to tell you that's a damn lie right here on camera. A man cannot have a baby. That's the Democrat woke. This is a difference. I am woke through the almighty God. And I'm bringing the message to you on point. It's up to you to take it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody listen. I'm Lady J. I'm up here in New York City with Mr. Derek Gibson. He's running for governor of New York City. So make sure you check him out. New York out. State. New York State. <laughs> I keep saying New York City. New York State. Let me tell you something. But in closing, when I come to New York, I get very overwhelmed, okay? And a little antsy. It's a lot going on out here. I'm looking at you, looking at the cars <laughs> and over here. It's a lot going on up here. Yeah. But anyway, thank you so much. I'll be back again. Um, stay tuned. Make sure you share this video.
especially if you live in New York, share the video because it's always good to hear what people have to say. You get another perspective, uh, especially when we talk about the song, we talk about the mask, the vaccination. So you get to hear another perspective. Wow, and, boy. Yeah, you get to hear the proud voice. You get to hear it from him instead of reading it. So thank you again. Go to ladiesdaymedia.com. Make sure you follow everything that we're doing over here. And you guys have a great day, and I'm out of here.